be with you. I'd like to welcome you to this special, all important service. A very great day. We've been here since Sunday, and the reason why we've been here is today. Today, the Lord Jesus prepared for us every preparation from the day he was born, and which culminated in this last week was actually because of today. Today, he just wanted to. Because of this battle, we want to celebrate right now. This victory we want to celebrate right now. So I'd like to you know, welcome you to this uh, all-important service. And I ask that you, wherever you are, join, join us from, uh, that you will follow us step by step as we we'll watch the Lord uh, in this victory today. Uh, it's a victory session. It's a victory, victory, victory service. It's, it's a victory array. We are just celebrating his victory. He's already done it. Amen. All right, let's take that song. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, and my song. Just only the first stanza, and we'll start running because we still have other stanzas to take uh, as the time may permit us as we are going on in the general service today. All right, let's go. Jesus, after he had scourged him to be crucified. This is the word of God. Let's start by praying. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to say thank you for making this day a good day, making it a good Friday, making it a day of celebration. Why this is because of what you did. And we're asking, oh Lord, that those who are with us here, those who are there in their homes, those who are watching, those who will be watching, Father will pray that the reason for which you came, Lord, shall be by reason of this of science, Lord. And all that's that have been celebrated today, as that, that's still being celebrated. Lord, the reason for which you came shall be made known by the Holy Ghost unto your people, that freedom shall be the portion of your people. Thank you, Father, for answer. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I'd like to welcome you to this time of the world. We are going to be starting this service as we look at the topic that says, the cross, not a shame. Today is conventionally known as a day that oh, we we'll have, we we'll sit down together and then, oh, we we'll go through the seven words of the cross. You know, oh, what Jesus said in the first word, what he said in the second word, what he said in all oh, the implications and maybe the significances in each of them. By the grace of God, we might have the opportunity of looking at one or two of them just for, for emphasis. 
Others we will just align them at the end of the service. Uh, as we are going to be closing the service, we will just run them through and then emphasize a few things. Why? Because if you go to our Facebook, of course, you already know. If you are on Facebook, you already know. We have already, already read, read in the everything about the seven words of the cross, of Jesus Christ on the cross, and then the significance, how they apply to us. So, if you are just seeing this video now, if you scroll up, you are going to see the seven words of, the cross, of Jesus Christ on the cross, where we wrote on them, and then gave you how, by the help of the Holy Ghost, how they apply to us. So, if you go there, you will find it. So we might not just go so much going through all the significances word by word. No, we might not have all the time because this an online service this is not just like we're in a full service. So we might not just so we're going to do as much as we can uh, for you to still be able to you know flow since it's just an online service. So today I want us to start as we begin to look at the cross. The cross, not a shame. That's the message the Lord gave us today. The cross. Not a shame. Hmm. Our Lord Jesus Christ died what is known as a shameful death. Why? Because originally it is known that any man who hangs on the cross is cursed. Say cursed. Even the Bible confirms it. In Galatians, that cross is he, I think Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Cross is he that hangs on the cross. In those days, in those days, in their time, crucifixion was the, the capital punishment for criminals. So Jesus died the death that criminals in his days died. He died. He was crucified as a criminal. He died as a criminal. <laughs> but why is it that till today Christians everywhere we carry about the cross. We show the cross as our emblem, as our symbol. Wherever you see the cross you will just have something at the back of your mind. Mm, this could be a Christian church. I mean the Calvary cross. I don't mean the other types of occultic cross that people have. Or the, no, we're not talking about those ones. No. I'm talking about the Calvary cross. The one. <laughs> Anywhere you see it, you, see, you have something in mind. So this, could, this should be a church. Christians are here. And what am I saying? We boldly carry about the cross. Even though we know that our Lord, our Savior, died on the cross. We should have naturally been ashamed that our master died the death of a criminal on the cross. We should be hiding the cross. Then why is it that we present the cross? Secondly, why is it that our master died on a Friday? Instead of us having it as a gloomy Friday, like I'm going to correct today, I said, Instead of us calling it a bad Friday, the fathers of the church called it Good Friday. Why? These are the things we are here to look at today. The fathers of the church call today a Good Friday, not because they made it to be, no. Because the Lord himself was the one who made it to be a Good Friday. Hmm. What and what are the reasons? Why today has turned out to be a Good Friday? What and what are the reasons? Why the cross is not the symbol, a symbol of shame, but a symbol of victory? Why? Why is it so? These are the things we need to know before ever we we'll start going through all that Jesus read, all that he, all that he spoke on the cross, like a... No, we're not in this service as a religious ritual. Oh, this person will come and read. Another person will come and read. No, no, no. We're tired. We'll do it every year. And yet, even after doing it every year, the reason for which Jesus went to the cross 
is not still realized in the lives of many in the church, let alone those outside the church. Hmm. I repeat, we we'll do it every year, yet the reason for which Jesus went to the cross still remains nothing happening in the lives of many, which we're going to see right now. I want to explain after explanation. If we have some time left, okay, we cannot go and run through. Number one, why did the Lord, why did he go to the cross? Why is it that the cross, we see the cross as what? As an emblem. We see the cross as a symbol, as a symbol of victory. Why? Why? Why, why is the cross a symbol of victory? Why is it that the cross is not a symbol of shame, but a symbol of victory? Number one, Jesus took my place on the cross. He paid the price of my death penalty by reason of Continue from Adam by being a posterity of Adam. By reason of the sin of Adam, disobeying God as our first father and our first mother, Adam and Eve, Jesus took my place. And I, not just my place, he took the place of everyone that descended from Adam. Jesus didn't die because he sinned. Jesus went to the cross to die because I sinned. Because the whole world sinned. And that's what the Bible said about the Apostle said, even those who didn't even commit the sin of Adam, they still died the death of Adam. So Jesus died the death that Adam and his descendants were supposed to die. Of which I am a chief. He went to the cross. Not because. Of himself. But because of me. So boldly. I carry the cross about. Boldly. We carry the cross about. Why? Because that is where. He went. And paid the price. For my sin. Number two. His death. Brought us life. Romans chapter 6, if you have Bible. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Verse 6. And then, we read verse 23. Romans chapter 6. And verse 6. Knowing, knowing this, that our me, our, our old man is crucified with him that the body of our that the our body sorry that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin 23 for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. His death brought us life. He went to the cross. Oh, verse 6 says, knowing this. And I'm sure many do not know. Say, knowing this. That our old man is crucified with him. The old man that you were born with from your father's lineage was crucified with him on the cross. If you are a child of God, that's why the Apostle Paul boldly declared in 2 Corinthians chapter 17. Chapter 5, please, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 
says, those who are in Christ Jesus, we, all things that passed away. So when a man, if I use it, the, put it the same way you want to say, so when a man is in Christ, he's now a new creation. Because of what? For all things are passed away. How did the old things pass away? Because the old things have been, the old man have been nailed with him on the cross. Why can you be carrying the old man again? The old causes, the old shame, the old pain, the old sicknesses, the old influences, the old oppressions. When the old man had been nailed with him on the cross, that's an abolition. That's that's wrong. And that's why by the look Holy Ghost today, it is not a time of going to repeat what Jesus has said on the cross. Um, men are still in bondage, men are still in poverty, men are still, men are still in their old lives. The power of sin still rules. The power of sin. The yoke of sin, the bondage of sin still holds men down. And men are still under the rule. Even some who preach are still under the rule of sin. No. That makes it look like Christianity is a religion. That makes it look like we're just playing religion. How can we go through Good Friday every year and resurrect with him in Easter and we still resurrect in sin? No. In hatred, in different levels of weaknesses, we resurrect in immoralities, we resurrect in all types of weaknesses that we have been in before ever we went to the cross with him today. No, 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 that's not the reason he came. If that was enough, if that was the reason, Jesus shouldn't have come. If we are supposed to pass through Good Friday and we remain in sin, there was no need for him to come. Because before ever he came, people were still playing religion. And some, some people were able to please God to a level. He came. Like we're going to be seeing. Or should I even start? The sixth word he declared, it is finished. When he declared it is finished, he declared that I have concluded and completed everything that is needed to free them from the bondage of sin both past, present and future it is finished it is concluded I have paid the debt and I have given them the power to live above sin I have given them the power to live above the devil as we are going to see now he concluded the work and stamped it as we're going to see soon. He says it is finished. How can he say it is finished? Some things are still remaining. Even some people who do not know the word of God today, who stand in the pulpit preach, some who are all Christians, they paint a picture that some things can still be in our lives. Even when we have, even when our old man has been nailed to the cross with the Lord Jesus. So see the bow under the rule of their father's the, the witnesses of their father's houses. So see the bow under the influences, the things that influence their father's houses, their father, their mothers, I mean their generations. But they, they still say we are in Christ. You say you are in Christ. Your father was not in Christ, and the things that ruled your father are still ruling you. Then, what actually happened to you when you went to Calvary with Jesus? No. No. Today you have to wake up as you are listening. You have to wake up. You are old. Knowing this, that our old man was nailed to the cross with him. Our old man had been nailed to the cross with the Lord. We do not carry. So, the influences of the old man are over. The oppressions of the old man are over. The oppressions that the old man rather was pr prone to are now over. The forces and powers 
that could rule my father's house because they didn't know Jesus. Now I have known Jesus. There is a demarcation. So when a man is in Christ, he's not a new creation. All things are passed away. How can the old things be said to be passed away? And they are still very, very much available with us? No. That's the reason for this message, child of God. When a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are, all sicknesses are passed away. All, of, all the afflictions are passed away. Old curses, they are passed away. Because they have been nailed to the cross. Number three, to portray this point, number three is that there on the cross, Colossians chapter 2, there on the cross, Jesus cancelled all the charges against us, against me, and against you. Even handwritings of ordinances, he brought them out. Hey, he went to disgrace there, to disgrace the principalities and powers. Those principalities and powers that have been challenging your life. Jesus went there to disgrace them. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 2, I read from here. Colossians 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. He said, but not the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. Masulia, Kalubra Oske, Lenkatoria, La Cupra, that the handwriting of ordinances, he blotted them out, he took them out of the way. Why are they still there, bro? They are there because you have claimed them to be there. Oh, when I see Christians do things and say things sometimes, I weak, I am worried. He said, Jesus, what Jesus has taken away today, what he has already taken away, what he has blotted out, what he has cleansed, you are still holding it tight. And yet you say you are celebrating Good Friday. What are we celebrating? And what do you need on here? Say he blotted them out. He took them away and nailed them to his cross. What? Is your eyes all being opened? And having nailed them, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a, a, an open show of them, triumphing over them. So he took them out of the way, nailing them to his cross. Bro, sister, what, what if you have gone to church today already, or you are yet to go, just go, go there, a uh, preacher, rest, make people recite, who will recite, who will recite the uh, first word of the cross. And the principalities and powers that are holding men down, I still holding them. No, bro, wake up. If you are there, wake up. If you are a preacher like me, wait, charge your member. You should do the right thing. Jesus has taken them out of the way. And he has nailed them to the cross. Speak the word of authority in the name of the Jesus who has nailed them to the cross. Let your people be made free. Man, let your speak the word of authority. Let your family, your children, wife, husband, let them be made free. Because Jesus has taken it out of the way. It's no longer there. You know one thing with the devil? You know what the devil does to us? Once the devil knows you don't know, and I've said it in a marriage clinic before. Once the devil knows you are in ignorance, you are in trouble. That is what is happening to a lot of Christians. A lot of people of God. When, once the devil understands you are in ignorance, you know, the ignorance, oh, we come here, oh, we're celebrating Good Friday, oh, we're celebrating Good Friday, oh, Jesus said this on the first word, oh, Jesus said it is finished. Why can't Jesus say, you say Jesus said it is finished, it is still 
happening with you? Everything is finished. It is finished. It, it can't be. It can't be. Jesus, Jesus is God. His works are on most of authority. Jesus said it is finished. What is not remaining? If Jesus says it's finished, what is remaining? It, it is finished means it is finished. It's not remaining again. That's what it means. He didn't leave the work unfinished. Yes. It is finished. Means it is finished. He, 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 he took everything. Every handwriting of Wadinas. He took it out of the way. Some people say, ah, leave that thing. If you came from this kind of family, or this kind of thing must happen to you, then I want you to understand. Oh, there was a day God opened my eyes and I told my family, I told the church, hey, what happened in your father's house 400 years ago cannot be bigger than what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Wake up. What is your problem? You're a child of God. What is your problem? Minister, you're even receiving. I'm sorry to use that word, but you're receiving people. If you don't know the word of God, you keep quiet. What happened? What happened in what my forefathers did 200 years ago? It cannot be bigger than what Jesus did for me 2,000 years ago. Which one is bigger? The sacrifice they made it with human beings, with virgins. But this sacrifice was made with the body and blood of the, the Son of God. That the only sinless man that lived on earth was Jesus. The sacrifice of my freedom, my redemption. My riches and my wealth, my establishment was, see, was, was done with the body and blood of the only Son of God. And you tell me that what my forefathers did 200 years ago will speak against me. The Bible says that the spirit that raised Jesus from this, the spirit of the Most High. And you mean that demons will be bigger than, 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 than demons, ordinary small demons, school children demons, will be bigger. Than the Holy Ghost? No, wake up. If you're a preacher, preach the right thing. And if you're a child of God, you have been believing that. That is fallacy. Wake up today. Good Friday is not a bad Friday. When we do all those things, we make Good Friday a bad Friday. We make it a ceremonial Friday. Today is supposed to be. A day of celebration of victory. That's what I posted. It's not even a day of coming to weep and cry. Listen. I'm sorry. I have to say this. It's not even a day of coming to weep and cry. No. Good Friday is not a day to come to weep and cry. It's a day to come to celebrate the victory that was won for us. It's a day to come to celebrate hey, yeah, 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 the, the, the dominion which we lost in Adam, which Jesus brought back for, unto us. We were actually created from Adam to reign and to rule, to have dominion over everything. We are created to prosper. We are created to ex excel. But in Adam, we are created even to be healthy. Sickness is not part of our creation. God didn't create us and put, and put in sickness. And that was why Jesus lived on earth without being sick. He showed us that, hey, in me, you can live a healthy life. Oh, this man is preaching for us. No, we were created to have dominion. A man of dominion does not get sick. It, it, we were created to reign. That's the word of, that's the reason for Good Friday. And that's why the cross is not actually a shame. The cross is for victory. The cross is for victory. The last one. And then we'll tie up today. The, tie, the last one, which I give. The last. Jesus triumphed over death on my behalf, on your behalf. On the cross. He conquered death on our behalf. And he destroyed, not just that he conquered death. He conquered death because he destroyed he that had the power of death. We read Hebrews chapter 2. And then we begin to tie up from there. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm not talking my word. I'm, I, I'm speaking what he said I should speak today. I'm speaking what he said I should speak today. 
I plan for us to come here to do seven words of the cross. But the Lord said, no. No. That's not the reason I came. I didn't come for people to continue to recite seven words of the cross every day. People don't need, my people don't need to know the reason I came. I have set them free completely. People go and recite and they are still there. People recite and go to their fight. No, no, no. People go and recite and they are still living in the people. No, no, no. That's the, not the reason. No. Jesus is not a ceremonial Jesus. He's not a religious Jesus. He's a Jesus of power. The cross is not a ceremony. The cross is a symbol of power. The cross is a symbol of victory. The, the cross is a symbol of dominion. The cross is a symbol of rulership. Reigning. That's what the cross is. That's why the fathers of the church gave us the cross as a symbol. The cross is a symbol. If you go study church history, Emperor Constantine, who actually make Christianity a religious visitor, he was to go for a war as we are taught in theology. And the cross appeared to him. He said, if you give me victory, I'll come back to serve you. He went and the cross gave him victory. He came back even in a ordinary war. He didn't know Jesus before then. Listen carefully. He didn't know Jesus before then. How come you know Jesus and the cross can't give you victory? Bro, what is it? How come you know Jesus? And this man didn't know Jesus. The cross appeared to him and said, if you give me victory, when I come back, I, I serve you. And when he went, the cross gave him victory. And he came back and started, he became a Christian. And then started serving the cross, started serving Jesus of the cross. And made Christianity. Religion is in the whole Roman Empire. What are we doing, brethren? What? The cross is a symbol of power. It's a symbol of victory. It's a symbol of rule, rule of and dominion. It's a symbol of restoration of reigning power. It's a symbol of prosperity. It's a symbol of riches and wealth. Not a symbol of poverty. It's not a symbol of weakness. It's a symbol of power. That's what the cross is. It's a symbol of life. Not a symbol of death. That's why today was called Good Friday. That's why today is celebrated. And because some people don't know, who we'll go there do religion, who we'll go there go, remain the same. No! If you're hearing this message, your life will never remain the same again in the name of Jesus. You are now a victor. The victory of the cross and prophesy is your victory in the name of Jesus. Sin will no longer rule over you. Amen. Principalities, powers of your father's house, of your community, of your nation, will no longer rule over you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Marie spirits will no longer rule over you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Forces that have dropped your father's house, that have brought people, limited them, made them not to make progress, sought Forces of your father's house will no longer rule you. They will no longer control you in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you have been poor by reason of forces and powers of darkness, I declare the victory and power, the prosperity that the cross have brought. I declare it unto you from today henceforth. Begin to prosper. Begin to prosper. Begin to prosper. Everything you lay your hand upon to do, I decree and declare, they shall prosper. Amen. Your academic shall prosper. In your job, you will prosper. In your marriage, you will prosper. Amen. Let me speak. Has your marriage been shaking? Yet you are celebrating the cross. What are you celebrating? Suka tuka unku pre etulia. Your marriage has been shaking. Because of the terror, the terrorism, I use that word, <laughs> the terrorizations of the enemy. No, today I speak by the power, the power that is behind the cross, the power of the risen Jesus. Let the powers that have been terrorizing your marriage bow now in the name of Jesus Christ. The powers. That have been terrorizing your business. I decree by the power that's in the name of the risen Jesus. Let them bow right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you been terrorized by the power of death? 
is going to be reading from Big Bruce now. Has death been terrorizing your family? Untimely death. In the name of the risen Jesus. Oh, the cross has taken over the death and have given you life. So today, I decree, as you are listening to me, untimely death is cancelled in your family. Other people may have been dying at a certain age, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I separate you from that right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I set you free from that yoke. Amen. In the name of Jesus, receive life. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I read Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2, 14. For as much then as children and panakers of death and blood, or sorry, please, of body and blood. He also himself, he also himself, likewise, took part of the same. That through death, oh my God, the Bible is pretty clear, through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Emphasis. And deliver him them who through the fear of death were all their life, lifetime subject to bondage. Through his death, through the cross, through the cross, he destroyed him that has the power of death. How can you be a child of God again? You are dying untimely. You are afraid of untimely death. No, how can even somebody die untimely again in your family? Bro, take over your family today and command that spirit of untimely death out. Jesus has destroyed him that has the power of death. I stop here today. Set you free. That's the reason for the cross. That's the reason for Good Friday. Jesus. Jesus set us free. We're no longer free. And if you study the whole seven words on the cross, each of them are significant. Just go. Find the, our Facebook. Find us. Our Facebook, you will see what Jesus did and what he said. The first, and the explanations were given them. You will also be blessed. I stopped here today because of Jesus went to the cross to establish my victory and your victory. So I declare to you from now henceforth, you are no longer in bondage. Wait, let's take that song as we see to conclude. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So love you the word that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened life's gates. Hey, yeah, yeah. Even some writers have written it. He opened life's gates. He opened life's gates. Life's gate is open by the cross today. That they all who want to come in as I pray now, who want to come in will come in. Some are in church, they have not come into the life gate. Some are in church, they are not yet in life. Some are in church, they are not yet in righteousness. Some are in church, they are not yet in prosperity. But today, as I pray right now, I welcome you. That's the reason for Good Friday. Let's pray and sing. To God, just, just the first stanza and then we're done. Let's go. To God be the glory.
Next tomorrow we are going to be resurrected with him. See, that's the great thing. God so much loved us. Can you come in now? Have you given Jesus your life? Are you a follower of the Lord Jesus? I invite you right now, wherever you are hearing me from, any part of the world, I invite you, say, Jesus, just pray after me. Say, Jesus, come into my life. I now realize that the whole price, the whole debt, of my sins you have paid. I realize that you have conquered principalities. All these principalities that have been troubling my life, I now realize you have conquered them for me. I realize that the forces and powers of my father's house, you have already conquered them. I realize that you have conquered all the powers that operate in my own career, in my field. Every day, I realize, Jesus, I receive you today as Lord and Savior. I come, I, I follow you today, step by step. To be a child of God, I follow you today. I receive you. Give me the power. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for doing it for me. Amen. I pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, those who have prayed that prayer, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you receive them. I pray, Lord, that, they are, that, that you give them the power. Let the power, let the power, Oh, let the power which you have already you validated, which you want validated, the victory you want today be their portion. Demons, forces of darkness and powers of darkness shall no longer terrorize them. Yeah. Shall no longer torment them. It is well with their soul. They are now born again. They are saved. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you. Is, are you. Have you been going through this terror, this terrorization of demons? In, the, in your family, even you have gone to church today, depending on the part of the world where you are, you are in, you have been going through demons terrorizing you in your father's house and your family. No, 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 that, should, that is wrong. If you are, that is wrong. You can't finish celebrating Good Friday. Demons are still rising. That is very wrong. I pray for you today, right now. Put your hand on your head wherever you are. I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, this one so God that demons, forces, and powers of darkness have been terrorizing. In the name of Jesus, whose I am, whom I say, who I preach today, whom I preach, I decree and declare. Let the forces and powers of darkness that have been ruling them right now, let their hands be cut off. Let them bow. Amen. Lord, I declare freedom. I declare deliverance unto them. In the name of Jesus, those who are sick, if you are sick, put your hand wherever now. I declare healing. Let the sickness, in the name of Jesus, I cause the sicknesses. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I cause the demons behind the sicknesses and I decree that they be arrested. I cast them out of the way. Those who are dead now, who are dying now, in the name of the risen Jesus, I cause that spirit of untimely death. Those that have been given the death, they, they will die. Oh, by reason of any doctor, any man, any woman, any native doctor, any witch doctor, are giving them the death, they will die. In the name of Jesus, I cause the person, I cause the demons, I cause the powers of death, I cause the powers of cancer, I cause the powers of diabetes, I cause the powers of high blood pressure, I cause the powers, oh, behind that chronic disease, that chronic sickness, oh, that terminal disease, I cause the power in the name of Jesus. I set them free and I release healing. I 
release deliverance. In the name of Jesus, I declare they receive a healing miracle and they shall testify. Lord, if it doesn't matter that people are, oh, problems are laboring on, some are laboring under, their families have been under chronic poverty by reason of forces and powers. Oh God, that keep men down. Powers of limitation. I call such powers. And by the power in the name of Jesus, I break those yokes right now. From off the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I set your people free. Some have not mentioned their matters. Some forces of darkness have held them down. They are not getting married. Some they are not conceiving. Oh, yeah, Kayanko, Lakutu. Some their wounds have been tied by evil forces. And even the forces that tie them are even say, telling them that they, they can't do anything. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the risen Jesus, let the power of the cross, by the power of the cross, let such forces that tie those women's womb. Those ladies uh, be crushed now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I set those daughters of Zion free, those families that set them free. I release them by this time next year when we are celebrating Good Friday, Jesus Christ. Hmm, you that have listened to me that have said them into this prayer, you shall be testifying. Amen. If you are a lady by this time next year, you are with your husband. If you're a man, by this time next year, God has shown you your wife and given you the money and you are going to marry. If you are a woman married and many years no child, by this time next year, if you are not carrying your child, you will be having your child in your womb. And you will not know the reason for Good Friday. You will not know the reason why Jesus went to the cross. Those who are done in business, by this time next year, you are up. You are testifying. Those that your projects have been tied down, by this time next year, you are celebrating. And every other matter, testimonies are, shall be a portion. Amen. Whatever be your own, as you are mentioning it right now, I declare and declare, you shall testify. Amen. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for an answer. Hiya, paya. Wherever you are listening to us from, 9 a.m. Saskatchewan time, tomorrow, will be our marriage clinic. And Sunday, 10.30, if you are wooden Saskatoon around, at Saskatoon Field House, meeting room 3, number 2020 college, college Drive, opposite University of Saskatchewan, we are going to be celebrating Easter with the Lord, the reservation. We are going to be having an Easter breakfast. Join us. Tomorrow morning, the marriage clinic, as we look at what it means, the implications. Jesus said, wash one another's feet, husbands and wives. You know, watch one of, so we're going to look at it tomorrow and the benefits. Why God said we should do it and why it's very, very important. Thank you for being part of today's program. Please, you are no longer in bondage. Raise your hand right now. Say, I am free. I am free. By the power that's in the name of Jesus. I am, I am free. I am free. You are free. You are no longer in bondage. Confess right. No longer confess wrong. It is well with you. I bless you right now. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you. Remain with you and all your own people now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being part of today's program. May the Lord bless you.